Madam Chairman, uh, Mrs. Kressler, ladies and gentlemen, members, colleagues from the European Court of Auditors, representatives of the Commission. This year, at the European Court of Auditors, we're celebrating our 40th anniversary. Over the last four decades, the European Union's political, financial and economic circumstances have changed dramatically. And the more recent challenges appear to be bigger than ever before. The financial and economic crisis, the unprecedented migration flows, climate change and terrorism. Uh, all of these things have uh, challenged the confidence that uh, people have in our institutions. They've tested the citizens' trust and we who work in the institutions must respond and deliver within our areas of responsibility. In that respect, I'm happy to say that I have good news to report. We find that the EU's accounts for 2016 present a true and fair view. We have signed them off, as has been the case every year since 2007. Revenue in 2016 was free from material error. But, over and above all that, there has been a sustained improvement in the estimated level of error in payments from the EU budget. About half of the EU spending we audited in 2016 was below the 2% threshold for a material level of error. As a result, we have issued a qualified opinion on 2016 payments rather than an adverse one. This is the first qualified opinion we have issued since we began to provide an annual statement of assurance in 1994 and it reflects important improvement in EU spending and management. Now, in concrete terms, it means that the overall level of error for EU spending in 20 16 was estimated at 3.1% compared with 3.8% in 2015 and 4.4% in 2014. The so-called entitlement payments, which are made for meeting specific conditions, account for about 49% of EU spending, and these had levels of error below 2%. They include direct aid for farmers, grants to students and researchers, and staff costs. The natural resources, market and direct support had an estimated level of error of 1.7% and administration 0.2%. However, when it came to the reimbursement payments, higher levels of error were found. Uh, these are made through refunds. For economic, social and territorial cohesion, the estimated level of error was 4.8%. And in natural resources, rural development, the environment, climate action and fisheries, it was 4.9%. Actions adopted by the Member States and the Commission did reduce the overall estimated level of error, but we found that sufficient information was available to further protection, to further prevent or detect and correct many errors. In our view, this means that there's no need for additional controls, but the existing controls must be enforced properly. And I do have one word of warning. The total payments the EU is committed to making from future budgets were higher than ever in 2016 at 238.8 billion. Clearing this backlog and preventing a new backlog should be priorities. Bearing in mind the planning of EU spending in the period starting in 2020. I mentioned at the outset that we all have a very important role to play in securing our citizens' trust in the European and national institutions. As part of that, it is important for our citizens to know that public funds are being spent lawfully. 
Our citizens can only place their trust in the EU's financial management if they and their elected representatives are sure and have assurance that the applicable rules are being complied with. Our statement of assurance on the reliability of the EU accounts and the legality and regularity of the underlying transactions has in the past contributed to significant improvements in compliance with EU rules. But just as much, or perhaps even more so, people want to know what they've got for their money. Did it make sense to build a particular road or airport in a particular place? Were jobs and growth actually delivered? Has the money been spent wisely? To answer these questions, we are increasingly putting our focus on performance. We want to help to make sure that taxpayers are getting value for their money. This requires a corresponding shift in focus of our audit work. We need to be in a position to publish the right audit work at the right time in order to make best use of the soft power which is vested in us. Audit work and policy work go hand in hand. So to continue accomplishing our mission and to respond to our citizens' current concerns, from now on we will be making some important changes to the way in which we audit the EU budget. In many areas of the EU budget, the control systems aimed at preventing, detecting and correcting errors have been significantly improved in recent years. This provides us with the opportunity to take a fresh look at the Statement of Assurance and we expect to be able to rely more on them when it comes to the regularity of spending in the system in the future. This approach will make it more transparent where there are still shortcomings. It will also help us to promote accountability and further improve the management of EU finances. <clears throat> At the same time, we will address real performance issues, such as the achievement of intended results, their impact, and how EU activities affect people's day-to-day -day lives. We will examine whether action at EU level was the best way to achieve what was desired. And we'll report on all of this in a balanced way, recognising achievements and taking into account limitations. At the European Court of Auditors, we don't just want to improve the way in which the EU functions. We also want to help improve our citizens' understanding of how it works. We have already taken important steps in this direction during the past year. We've provided a large number of audit reports on topical issues ranging from youth employment to the refugee crisis and the hotspot approach to energy and climate change. In addition, We've issued briefing papers, for example, on the mid-term review of the current multi-annual financial framework. We've published opinions on legislative proposals affecting EU financial management and delivered observations on broader themes based on our research and experience. In decades to come, we'll continue to act as the guardians of the EU's finances and of our citizens' interests. We will continue to be an independent voice, highlighting the things that work well, but shining a light on uncomfortable truths where they do not work. And in a world of widespread misinformation and manipulation of data, the European Court of Auditors will continue to provide reliable and unbiased information. Ladies and gentlemen, in this uncertain and increasingly inward-looking world, we must ensure that Throughout every step of the legislative and budgetary cycle, we must make sure that the EU can deliver efficiently on things that matter to the citizens. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to our exchange of views. Mr Lazaro is... Um, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, what he has to say and looking forward to an exchange of views with him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Take the other one.